This video will be about the late heavy bombardment, an alleged uptick in meteoric activity around 4 billion years ago. Early Earth was bombarded with many meteorites. Being bombarded is in fact the very story of Earth's formation, as it grew from a pre-solar grain to a chondrite meteorite to an ever larger and larger body that differentiated its iron and iron-loving elements down to the core, and a lighter collection of elements rose above to make the mantle and crust. This had all happened by 4.55 billion years ago. I know this because that's when almost all the achondrite meteorites are from. Even at this point of Earth being almost fully formed 4.55 billion years ago, it's presumed that the sky was not close to empty of meteorites and even a wannabe planet sheared our Mother Earth's orbit. In fact, it's thought that 4.53 billion years ago, this very last wannabe planet, Thea, collided and virtually reset Earth's largely hardened black surface back into a red molten world. After that, many meteorites continued to fall for some time, presumably becoming less and less common as Earth's orbit was cleared of the residual debris of planetary formation. By 4.4 billion years ago, Earth was most likely covered by a near-globe encircling ocean. But this blue world was not to remain for long, as the surface of Earth would turn back to red and black. Some 300 million years after the advent of this great global ocean, so about 4.1 billion years ago, there was a resurgence in heavenly bodies falling upon Earth, and this uptick in heavenly activity is thought to have lasted to roughly 3.8 billion years ago. At 3.8 billion years ago, the meteorite amount again subsided significantly, dropping relatively steadily, possibly with little outbursts at various times throughout history making bumps on the wood we graph, up until today. However, meteorites have not vanished from the scene as being massive impactors. As recent as 67 million years ago, a meteorite played a major role in decimating the dinosaurs and setting the stage for other animals to radiate and put in play the next scene in the evolutionary drama of Earth. And another indication of the relevance of meteorites in today's world is that NASA has a mandate from the United States Congress to monitor all meteorites larger than a kilometer to give us foreknowledge should any be heading our way. Click or press the thumbs up button, ditto on the subscribe button if you haven't already, and support this channel if you are so moved. Links in the description below. Let's go. Back to this spike in meteorites between 4.1 and 3.8 billion years ago. On Earth, many of the oldest rock sites seem to line up near 3.85 billion years ago. Because of this, scientists had in the past postulated that Earth was molten up until that point. That is, they thought that Earth had been roughly fully formed about 3.55 billion years ago, and for about 700 million years after that, Earth remained in a molten red state. But we now have a rock older than 3.85 billion years ago, from 4.03 billion years ago, and furthermore we have solid material from Earth in the form of a crystal of the mineral zircon going back as far as 4.4 billion years ago. And beyond the concrete evidence of the solidity of early Earth prior to 3.8 billion years ago, we also have the computer models that scientists use to simulate the cooling of Earth, and that suggests a period of about 100 million years of cooling before Earth hardens, much less than the 700 required for a molten Earth up until 3.85 billion years ago. But if rocks existed prior to 4.4 billion years ago, as the zircon and the computer models would suggest, where are they? The general answer is that they've been weathered and recycled such that only some long-lasting crystals remain, such as the hardy zircons, and the rest of the material is gone by now, as it's been melted and made anew in the geothermal story of Earth's history. But beyond the story of Earth's weathering and rock recycling mechanisms, there is also the fact that meteorites pelted early Earth far more often than they do now. And in this late heavy bombardment period, starting about 4.1 billion years ago, Many think that the surface returned, at least near the top, to a red molten world. Back to a world with no oceans, and if life had already arisen by this time, that life would have either been wiped out by this barrage or survived deeper inside the surface in rocks which hadn't melted, or perhaps life was even blasted from Earth in these events and survived in the atmosphere long enough to survive this period and land and seed Earth once again once the bombardment settled down. Although most scientists believe in this story of a late heavy bombardment, the details seem to not be as neat as they were once considered, and some scientists reject the evidence as legitimate to begin with. Let's take a closer look. 
The evidence that suggested that Earth was bombarded between 4.1 and 3.8 billion years ago initially came in the form of rocks from the moon. Plate tectonics and life have done a number on our planet, so any remaining signs of this epic period of meteorite bombardment has long since been annihilated. But the moon, in contrast, has long been a cold, dead rock where features can remain for billions of years. And one of these features are the many basins that pockmark the moon's surface. And the Apollo 15, 16, and 17 missions attempted to land near three different large lunar basins and collect rocks associated with each of the three in turn. The three basins were, in order of the Apollo mission, the Imprium Basin, the Nectaris Basin, and the Serenitatis Basin. The rocks that were lifted were impact breccias, a rock type formed from a conglomerate of smaller rock parts, and the impact in impact breccia refers to the fact that this breccia shows signs of an intense impact. An odd fact was discovered about these rocks lifted from the moon. Their ages clustered from around 4.1 to 3.8 billion years ago. In actual fact, the numbers are a little more complicated. The first rocks clustered from 3.75 to 3.95 billion years ago. Then came rocks that were slightly more expansive time-wise from 4.2 to 3.7 billion years ago. But regardless, the clustering of impacts from this not exactly so neatly defined time period is clearly more prominent than any impacts from earlier or later. Beyond the evidence from the moon, evidence for an uptick in meteorite activity now comes to us from Mars and Mercury as well. On Mars, Hellas and Argier, two major impact craters, come from between 4.1 and 3.8 billion years ago, and Mercury's Caloris impact basin gives us an age of 3.9 billion years ago. Another source of evidence comes from asteroids. Meteorites that show signs of having experienced shockwaves, an effect of having been around an impact, arrived to us showing ages of 4.55 to 4.4 billion years ago, but then from 4.4 billion years ago to 4 billion years ago, there's a sharp decline in the amount of these meteorites that arrive here, and then the meteorite population goes up from 4 billion years ago and on to even later than the late heavy bombardment is normally thought to have been, up to 3.4 billion years ago. So something seems to have caused the spike in the amount of meteorites. And that begs the question of what that could be. There are a number of ideas in this space, and the two main ones are, one, that what we're seeing here is some sort of late-stage accretion of debris left over from planetary formation that's finally falling in at this late stage, and two, we're seeing an effect of complicated but modeled gravitational interactions of Saturn and Jupiter, and then eventually Neptune and Uranus, and the inner part of the Kuiper Belt, which is cleared out and sent hurtling inwards, which would be those meteorites that fall during this period. And some people argue for some combination of these two ideas with accretion and Jupiter's dance both playing a role. I left the link in the description if you'd like to better understand these ideas for what might have caused the late heavy bombardment. While most accept the late heavy bombardment as a real historical event, some don't. Some argue it never happened at all. Two points raised by critics of the widespread belief in the late heavy bombardment are these. The first is, the reason we don't see many impact basins and rocks prior to 4.1 billion years ago is because all those basins that were there have been destroyed by further asteroidal impacts. So they argue that you can't reason from a lack of remaining early impacts that there weren't actually plenty of them at the time. After all, the bombardment was destroying it all, and all that's left for us is what hasn't been destroyed. Another contention against the belief in the late heavy bombardment objects to the evidence that we have from the moon rocks and says that the moon rocks that came from Apollos 15, 16, and 17 that were supposedly from three distinct basins actually all came from the large Imbrium basin. The idea is that Imbrium's rocks were distributed so widely and near the surface because it's the youngest of the three basins and therefore would have had rocks most recently spewing out to all the neighboring areas where we found some of them. So if this is true, the apparent clustering of dates that initially gave this theory its legs, these critics argue, is based on a false presumption that these rocks come from three distinct impact events. That's the story of the late heavy bombardment, or the LHB, and until next time, may all your quests be ever filled.